Jesus came back today. Today is Palm Sunday. Jesus makes his triumphal entry into the city. I'm still, I want you to know that he still is triumphant. He still is triumphant. He has not relinquished his triumph to anybody else. He reigns by himself. Praise God. And those who have turned their backs on the Lord just as they did after his triumphal entry, he still loves you. And he's still waiting for you to turn around. He's still waiting for that. I'm going to direct your attention to the word of the Lord today in the book of Exodus chapter 13. What I love about the word of God, it is inexhaustible. That's why we've been able to preach messages for 2,000 years from the same passages. God is able to speak to hearts in a different way through the same passage. That's how great God's word is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 17. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest preadventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about. Please notice that first phrase. But God led the people. Through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up, harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Sakath and encamped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud and led them the way to lead them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. And he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Hallelujah. Jesus, the Almighty God, led the children of Israel. He led his people he provided shelter from the sun by the cloud and light by the fire and warmth by the fire by night. I'm telling you, God has it in control, whether it's daytime or nighttime. And God is the one that is leading us. He's leading us. One other scripture from the book of Mark, chapter 11, and verse 1 through 4. Mark, chapter 11, verse 1 through 4. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethage, and Beth 
Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as you ent ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways meet and loosed him. They found themselves in a place where two ways met. I want to, by the help of the Lord, minister to you a message I've entitled The Meeting of Two Ways. The Meeting of Two Ways. Can we pray together right now? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that your spirit would go into every home that is watching this morning. I pray, Lord, that every heart would be open and receptive to your word. I pray, Lord, that you would help me to minister this message to this congregation and to many others today who are listening and watching. I pray, Lord, for an anointing to rest upon me. I pray for an anointing to rest upon every listener today. I pray that the will of the Lord would be accomplished in this time. That there would be an assurance in the hearts of your people, Lord Jesus. That whether it is day or night, you still are leading us and you still are sheltering us from the elements of this world. I pray, Lord, for every pastor today. I pray, Lord, for every congregation today that is hungry for the Word of God. I pray that your arms would be securely wrapped around your people. We're standing on your promises, Lord. You will never leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah, we claim that today in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you today in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. We know that we are headed in our way. And God has his own way. He says, my ways are not your ways. My ways are higher than your ways. I pray that today that I don't want to just preach to the choir today. I'm sure the choirs listened to multiple messages online this week, both in music and in word. But I want to preach to somebody who's headed in the wrong direction today. And I want the word of the Lord to touch you and get you to recognize that there is an opportunity for you to change your direction. Hallelujah. If you're not headed God's way, you don't have to go wrong and stay going in that other direction. But you can change your direction today. Hallelujah. There is a meeting of two ways. And God wants you to know you can change. Hallelujah. Have you ever thought about time? How time is measured? The components of time. Time is measured by the 
resolution of the planets and the sun and the stars. Time has a beginning and time has an end. Time has a past that can be increased and time has a future that can also be diminished. Time can be defined by its parts. You have its minutes and seconds and hours. Time can be defined by its parts. And each of these parts sustain relation to each other and to the whole. Any one of those elements of time can be selected out of the whole and given an individual name. And it would always relate to time. Any one of its parts can furnish an, ulti an ultimate to, uh, for the mind to reason about all of the others. When you talk about time, you're talking again about minutes and seconds and hours and days and months. And you can relate it all to time. But I want to tell you that eternity is different than time. Eternity cannot be defined like time. Eternity is beginningless and it is endless. And you cannot measure eternity for it has no past. It has no future to analyze. There is a tremendous unity in eternity. Eternity is something that always was and is and always will be. The only contemporary with eternity is God himself. It began when he began and he had no beginning. Eternity will end when he ends and he has no end. In contrast with today, which quickly passes, eternity is forever. But God, in his infinite wisdom, put a twist right in the middle of time and eternity. Right in the middle of eternity and time, he put a hill called Golgotha. Right in the middle of time and eternity, there's a place that we call Calvary. Yes, the importance of Calvary is that now we have a choice which direction we want to go in. Amen. We talk about the human will. This is where the, this human will is so important because before there was Calvary, man had no option of which direction they were going. They were going to be lost no matter what. But because God put a hill in the middle of time and eternity and called it Calvary, and then we have a choice today. I believe that Calvary gives man a corner so that man can change the direction that he is going. Before a middle was created in eternity, humanity had no choice of where we were going. We were servants to sin and we were servants to Satan. And that was it for the time that we were conceived until the time that we died. Although Calvary gives us a choice, amen, there really is today only two choices that can be made. There is only a right and a wrong choice. There's only good and evil. There's only heaven and hell. There's only two choices. All of humanity is walking in one direction or another. Today, in order for us to be politically correct, it's hard to define absolutes because everybody may disagree. Somebody may say the opposite of what you're saying. I'm not so worried about what man says. I want to know what God says. Uh, amen. His word is forever settled. Amen. But some people, amen, they want to go their own way. And they think that their way is right. And the Bible says that every way is right in his own eyes. 
Amen. Even people who are struggling to set a moral standard in an amoral world refuse to define absolutes. I used to listen to a radio talk show with Dr. Laura, and uh, I, you know, I liked uh, how spunky she was and her position on a lot of issues. But even on her program, she had to be very generic. She would end her program by telling people, you got to go to a temple or a church or a shrine or talk to a rabbi or a priest or a monk in order to touch God. She never gave any absolute. But she's only kind of right because you do need to talk to God. Amen. But not just any God. You need to talk to someone who knows about God and not just anybody. You need to find somebody who knows something about the true and the living God. I'm telling you, his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We read it in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12 that there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Again, in chapter 16 of Proverbs, verse 25, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. These two scriptures are trying to drive home a very important message, amen, which is that man's ways are always wrong, but God's ways are always right. Psalms chapter number 16. Getting ahead of myself here today. Amen. Let's step back a little bit to the book of Hosea, chapter 14, and verse number 9. Who is wise, and he shall understand these things, prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them, but the transgressor shall fall therein. Proverbs tells us that the ways of man are right in his own eyes and seem right to him, but the way his ways are death. Hosea reminds us that amen, the ways of the Lord are right and the righteous are going to walk in those ways. Amen. It's still true today. Psalm 16 and verse 11, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. How are we going to know the right way? The Bible says, thou will show me. God is going to show you, amen, what is the right path in life to take. Amen. God sure strikes a great bargain. Amen. If we go our own way, there is death. But if we follow God's way, there is life. But not only life, there is joy. And there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the way and see and ask for the old paths. Where is a good way? It's a good way. And walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Man is so stubborn, so uh, intent upon doing his own thing. Amen. Praise God. But we have to ask for the good way. Where is the good way? Where are the old paths? The scripture tells us to ask for the old paths. Why? It's so important, amen, because we want to know, amen, how to walk with Jesus. We want to know how to be saved, amen. Whatever it took the apostle Peter, amen, and the disciples to be saved, that's what it's going to take you and I today to be saved. Amen, whatever, amen, whatever way, amen, got the early church and the pioneers, amen, and into the presence of God, that's what it's going to take this generation also to get into his presence. The Bible tells us that the early church continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Amen. These are the old ways. Amen. That we got to ask for. Amen. There still is only one way to be saved. 
There still is only one gospel, amen, that can save men. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to read the warning label. The right way is not always the easiest way. Hallelujah. It's not always going to be sunshine and rosy walking with God. But it's always the right way. There's going to be plenty of struggles that we're going to have to go. And there's going to be sacrifices that we're going to have to make. But it's still the right way to go God's way. Acts chapter 9 and verse 2. And desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that he, that if he found any in this way, whether they were men or women, that he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. This was Saul. He was so zealous about these people that were on a different way than he was on. And so he asked letters to go and arrest them. Acts chapter 22 and verse 4. He confesses this again. He says, I persecuted this way unto the death Binding and delivering into prison both men and women. Amen. And Paul, amen, was acknowledging that there was a way, amen, that he once didn't travel on. He wasn't going the same direction and the same way that these people that he wanted to arrest were going in. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed violent in fight, turned to flight the armies of the alien. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they may obtain a better resurrection. And the others had trial of cruel mocking and scourging, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, were slain by the sword. They, were, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise of God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. I'm telling you, the church has been here before. The church has been here before. But we're going to stand if we don't stick with this, if we don't stay in this way, if we don't ask for the old path, if we don't continue the way that God has sent us. Amen. We're going to have to stand before God in light of these other people. Amen. That endured all of this hardship. But God, I, God, you won't get to go to church today. These people here, they suffered. They were cut in half. They were burned alive. They were fed to the lions. They were put in prison. They were killed. They just wandered about in the world because they had chosen a way, amen, that the rest of man didn't want to acknowledge was the, that their way was wrong. The purpose of Calvary was not to make it easy to get to heaven. The purpose of Calvary was to make it possible to get to heaven. Yes. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by him. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go there in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way. Hallelujah. Narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. 
a world where seven billion plus people live today. The word of God says that not many are going to find this way. And when God delivered the children of Israel from the bondage of Egypt, there was a direct route to Canaan. There, there, and, and it was a more scenic route. But God chose in his wisdom to take them another way. He, told, he chose to take them through the wilderness. There was a direct route, more like as the crow flies. I mean, there was a, a straight route to the land of Canaan. But God, in his wisdom, he didn't take them that way. But he took them the long way. The way through the wilderness. That way took them more than 40 years rather than just a few days. And you know what? People haven't changed so much over the years. We still want the quick and easy rather than the long way. You see, God knew that the children of Israel were ready to be delivered, but he also knew that they were not ready to possess the promised land. Hallelujah. I've said it before, amen, that God, it just took God one night, amen, to get them out of Egypt, but it took him 40 years to get Egypt out of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was only what they learned during those 40 years of wandering in the wilderness that God would teach them how to listen to his voice. And God would develop them and God would instruct them. Amen. I want to encourage you today. Amen. You feel like you're going the long way around. God is still leading you. God is still leading you. Don't be discouraged, amen, because God is still going to provide for you. And God is still going to show you the way that you must go. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I read to you from Exodus chapter 13 in the beginning in my text. But looking back again in those scriptures, verse 21 and 22, the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, to lead them the way, and by night in the pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from the people. He kept providing for them all along the way. Listen, I've been living for God for a long time. And I'm telling you, God has never failed me one time. God has never left me. Amen. He's never abandoned me. He's always provided for me. It didn't matter what I needed. God was always there to provide for me. Hallelujah. I want to tell you the way that we're on right now. Amen. It's not always the easiest way. But I'm telling you, God is going to lead us in that way. And he's going to provide for us all along the way. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It was just before the triumphal entry into Jerusalem by Jesus that he, the Bible says in Luke or in Mark chapter 11, that he sent two of his disciples into a city, a village over against them. He said, when you enter into that city, amen, there's going to be a colt that's going to be tied up there. In verse number four, Mark 11, and they went their way and found the colt tied by the door. Telling you God tells you something, it's true. Yes. If God tells you something, you don't have to wonder whether it's true or not. It is true. Right. Amen. How did Jesus know that there was a cult there? He's God. Right. He knew there was a cult there in that village. I'm telling you, God, amen, knows what's going on in every village. 
He might not be in that village at that specific time, but he already knows what's going on in that village. He knew that there was a cult. Amen. The disciples, they went to that village and under the instructions of Jesus Christ. Jesus led them there. He told them where to go and what they would find. And when they got to the place where the cult was, the Bible says that it was a place where two ways met. It was a place where two ways met. You see, today in the Holy Ghost, there is a meeting of two ways. There is the way that you might be going, and there is God's way. Amen. I was thinking about the cross last night. Uh, amen. And then what it signifies. Amen. It signifies if you start. Amen. At the top. You, it signifies man's way. Man's way is going down. But I'm telling you what does God do? Right in the middle of the cross. Uh, he puts a, amen, another cross road. Amen. Go in another direction. When he stretched out his arms. In between time and eternity. And he told us he loves us this much. He made a way of escape so that we didn't have to continue heading down. He stopped us at a place where two ways met. That's what Calvary speaks to me. When I was going the wrong way, Calvary showed me that there was another opportunity. Hallelujah. Where was this place where two ways met? It was at the corner house at the entrance of the village. It was a very public place where people were going to be able to see you. It was a place that you couldn't hide if you went to the place where two ways met. It was visible from uh, all aspects. Uh, amen. Sometimes people don't want to change their way because their pride is going to keep them uh, going in the same destructive pattern and way that they've always gone. They don't want people to see them amen, making the choice to come to an altar of repentance. They don't want the people to see amen, that maybe they were going the wrong way. The place where two ways met was a very public place. I want you to know today how serious this message is for you. That if there is only one corner in all of time and eternity, isn't it important that we don't miss our turn? If there's one corner in all of time and eternity, it's important that we don't miss our turn. I'm asking the Holy Ghost today to do what I can't do. All I can do is preach this word. But I'm asking the Holy Ghost right now, wherever you are, that he would convict your heart that you would begin to evaluate the direction of your life. The way that you've always gone. Well, I, why are you going this way? Well, this is the way my daddy showed me. This is the way his daddy showed him. This is the way for generations that we've gone and done things. I'm telling you, just because somebody else has gone this way or for a lifetime doesn't mean that it's the right way. But we need to find out what God wants us to do. It's time, amen, for us to turn the corner. It's time for somebody, amen, who's been heading in the wrong direction to say, God, I'm going to turn my life around. I'm going to turn my life around. That's what we do in repentance. We ask God to forgive us of our sins. We repent and we head in the opposite direction. We head in a direction that we've never gone in before. When we obey the gospel, which is repentance, baptism in Jesus' name by immersion, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, 
when we, amen, finally acknowledge that our way was the wrong way and we choose God's way, what we're doing is we're headed in a whole new direction in life. We're headed toward God instead of away from God. I want you to notice here in Scripture what happens at a place where two ways meet. Verse 4, they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways met, and they loosed him. What happens at a place where two ways meet? I believe that there is a loosing that is going to take place. There are those of you under the sound of my voice today who are bound by sin. You're bound by addictions. You're bound by drugs or alcohol or pornography or, or immorality of, any, of all kinds. You're bound by all the things of this world because you've been going in that way all your life. But I'm telling you, if you get to the place here this morning where a preacher wants to take you to a place where two ways intersect, a place where, place where there's a crossroad, I'm telling you that there can be a loosing in your life. You can be set free. Your life can change. You can head in a different direction. Hallelujah. Today, I'm reaching for somebody else's heart today. Maybe even you've been in church all your life. Maybe you've been making some bad decisions. Maybe you've been altering your course. Maybe you're not doing what you know the Word of God tells you you should do. Today is a day when you can change directions. This is a place. This is the meeting of two ways. Right here. God, he wasn't satisfied for mankind who he created with a will to not have a choice. He was not satisfied he wasn't satisfied to let man just die, live and die, and go to hell. He said, I'm going to do something that's never been done. And right in the middle of eternity and time, Calvary. Calvary is the meeting of two ways. Calvary is where you can choose to just continue on in the way you've been going or you can choose to head in a different direction. Would you bow your heads with me right now as we pray? I'm praying today that God would touch your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that I'm not anybody, but I'm telling you the word of God is powerful today. The word of God can change you whether you're sitting in this sanctuary or whether you're sitting at home or whether you're someplace else today. The Word of God is powerful. I pray right now that the Word of God would reach down into your heart and touch you in a way that you've never been touched before. I pray Lord, right now, Lord Jesus, to that person who is considering his ways or her ways, Wondering if this is the only choice that they've got. Wondering if only destruction is the only choice for their life. Wondering if being lost is the only choice. I pray, Lord, the word of hope. The word of God would go to them and reach to them and tell them no. You have a choice today. 
have a choice. Save somebody today, Lord Jesus. Somebody that's arrived. The meeting of two ways. Somebody who's at the crossroads in their life. Save them today. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ.
But Jesus said in John 14 that I am the way. I guess we're all faced with a choice today. Pastor challenged us to answer the question, which way will we choose? I'm praying today, and I want you to join with me as we close in prayer for this service, that we will choose the way that God has ordained. Jesus Christ is not a way, but the Bible says he is the way. So let us pray now as we close and ask the Lord to show us that way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for the message that was given. We thank you, God, today that we are not lost without direction, but you, Lord, came to this earth. Lord, you died for us. As pastor revealed to us, oh God, that there is a way. And not just a way, but Lord, you said you are the way. Lord, we embrace you, Jesus Christ, as the way. Lord, we accept you. We're going to be followers of you, oh God. We surrender to you today. And we ask you to lead us, oh God. For we do not want to be found on that way that leads to destruction and death. The highway of hell. But today, God, we want to be found on the straight and narrow path, oh God, that you have given unto us. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We ask your blessings on everyone who's listening today. Lord, we ask that you would convict their heart. We ask, oh God, that you would stir up, oh Lord, their spirits, that if they are on the wrong path, that today they will choose, God, to turn around and give their lives to you, O oh Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for providing the way we ask it. All in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.